Hey, this is Notzer, and we're talking U.S. Cruiser Line Split. Wargaming made some developer blog posts, and I just wanted to clarify all the information because I think it was done inadequate. So first of all, it's work in progress, and the stats are not final. Wargaming knows that community contributors must have this attached to their video. They must have this at the beginning of their description. They must have this at the beginning of the video itself in the form of, you know, this is a work in progress, five or ten second pre-roll. And yet, they do not feel it necessary for their own posts to provide that information. So, I'll do it for them. This stuff is work in progress, and the stats are definitely not final. For whatever reason, they are immune to this bit of information, and yet they clearly state it to every single community contributor all the time. You might have noticed that recently community contributors have been a little bit more forceful in their presentation of a work in progress status. We recently had a mandate to enforce it to the letter of the law. And some of us pushed for a little bit more attractive watermark. I think mine works out very well. And in fact, I think they quite literally took that watermark and made it their own. And I'm cool with that. But it's really important, Wargaming, that you put work in progress. I think you need to do it in the screenshot itself. Just put it on like the side of the corner, whatever you do. This is really important. So they showed off the Tier 6 Pensacola, the Tier 7 New Orleans, the Tier 8 Baltimore, the Tier 8 Cleveland, and they talked about the Buffalo, the Tier 9. Obviously the Des Moines, the Tier 10, and it's not changing. They showed off the stock modules. So it's basically the worst version of the ship. And yet they put that it's stock modules and also that the name is a placeholder. No, we're not renaming the Pensacola to the Salt Lake City. That's purely for super testers and community contributors. So it's not confusing for someone who's playing a tier seven Pensacola to run up against a tier six Pensacola. What the hell? That would be really awkward in the client. What's going to happen is there's going to be a Salt Lake City. There's going to be an Astoria. There's going to be a Pittsburgh, a Columbia, and obviously a Buffalo that will show up in your game on the live server in 7.2 with super testers and community contributors at the helm. And these are merely the test version of the moved U.S. cruiser line split ships. I see constant comments. Oh, is this name going to be final? No, the name's not final. It's quite literally going to be a Tier 6 Pensacola, a Tier 7 New Orleans, a Tier 8 Baltimore, a Tier 9 Buffalo, a Tier 8 Cleveland. And yet, that's the last statement in the article. Of course, people aren't going to read it all, especially in Facebook where it's, it requires you to see more details in order to do that. So it even requires an extra click just to see that information. So. I'm not surprised this all occurred like this. It's frustrating because they know better. They quite literally tell us. And I think community contributors know better than what was presented. It probably was someone who wasn't privy to the community contributor and maybe super tester style of communication. Maybe they just flung it up there, you know, no problem at all. But we need to tell people that this is a pre-changed Tier 6 Pensacola. Wargaming will see if the Tier 6 Pensacola needs adjustments. It still has all of those upgrade modules that you would expect on the Tier 7. Just a Tier 6. And a Tier 6 Pensacola is absolutely going to gain in power just by going one tier down. A, a worse version was the Cleveland because it was, you know, it was taking a Cleveland, a tier six, and trying to make a tier eight out of it. 
About the only thing they updated with the Cleveland was a little bit of a health boost, maybe a slight r rate of fire, although I, I don't see a rate of fire adjustment, and it has the ability to equip radar. Not, not a big change, right? They're going to test it. They're going to see if all this stuff is viable. I can't wait for the Cleveland to have radar, quite frankly. I think that's going to be fantastic. Gosh, destroyers, if you think you die quick to Des Moines and Baltimore's and New Orleans, a light cruiser line of American with radar, it's the Mogami 2.0. It, it will devastate everything in its wake. And I can't wait to test it. I can't wait to see how close these come. Obviously, 7-2, French battleships. Everyone's going to be excited to play those. Community contributors, super testers will be checking out the U.S. cruiser line. That is the adjusted cruiser line. It can go one of two ways. It could be the Japanese destroyers and get, honestly, nothing changed. And even now, with the Shiratsuyu nerfed, it looks even worse. Or it could be the Soviet destroyers and... Just a nice, clean update to make everything just even better. My gut says it's going to be mediocre. And I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. But I... I don't have a lot of faith that they feel like the Pensacola and the New Orleans are performing at an inadequate level. I think they feel like, oh, they're, they're fine. You know, they, they're right around where all the win rate should be, but... If we're going to be completely honest with ourselves, they're not fine. Not by a long shot. So I'm... I'm hesitant to see these changes. So far, I can just sum up all the developer blog posts that they made. They have not adjusted the power. They just lowered or increased the health pull of the ship and maybe the equipment slot. So, something like the Baltimore at Tier 8 is going to be better than the Baltimore at Tier 9. Same with the New Orleans, same with the Pensacola. I'm afraid about the Cleveland. I want the Cleveland to be really effective. I love the Cleveland design. You know, give us back the gun velocity. Holy crap, just give us the gun velocity. But I'm really afraid. I'm really afraid that they don't want that ever back. I remember the Cleveland. I remember... How absolutely terrifying it was to play any DD around a Cleveland. And it, it still is to this day. The only problem is its effective range is like 7 kilometers, 8 kilometers. Yeah, well, it used to be a lot stronger. Up to, you know, 10 kilometers against DDs. But that's all on the velocity, right? It's all on the guns. So I'm, I want everything to work out. I just don't know that it will. I really enjoy the prospect of checking these out. We'll have to see together. And I can't wait. Because they're on the developer blog post, that means it has to come with 7.2. That's just my prediction. They haven't said anything. And even if they did, I couldn't tell you. I'd have to kill you, of course. Nothing personal. <laughs> can't have that information fall in the wrong hands. And yeah, I'm excited to see it. 7.2 can't come fast enough. I can't wait to work on the French battleships. I'm very close to getting the Tier 10 and the Pan-Asians. All of the different things they've been running with the 200% and the insane XP camo, I am running, racing through the Pan-Asians. I should have it, honestly, by the end of this week. The Tier 10. And obviously, the 7.2 is not coming out by the end of this week, I don't think. So everything's working out pretty good. I can't wait to... Honestly, the only thing that's really disappointing is the way the French battleship missions are awarded. I cannot, for the life of me, get the tier eight. And I know I'm privileged. I know. Some of you have none of the extra battle missions. It's so infuriating to just wait for RNG related to something like that. But, you know, whatever. I hope everyone enjoyed seeing the Pensacola be mediocre. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I'll catch you next time.